Welcome back to the Sportsmax Zone in Cricket. On a Thursday, we spoke to former Wendy's woman all-rounder Shaquana Quinjin about her ordeal since suffering a career-ending knee injury while playing in a warm-up match in 2017. Quinton, who describes herself as disabled, says she has been ignored by Cricket West Indies after initially being assisted by her former employer. She told us that the West Indies Players Association last spoke to her a year ago to wish her happy birthday. Shaquana, who still suffers excruciating pain even after three surgeries, says her ordeal has left her depressed and broke. The Chief Executive of Cricket West Indies, Johnny Grave, has agreed to speak with us today to outline how the body has assisted Shaquana over time. Welcome, Johnny. Good evening. We're happy to have you. Uh, we had Shaquana on the show yesterday, and of course today we're giving you the opportunity to explain to us what happened. Well, look, firstly, I'd say that I'm, I'm naturally very sympathetic to, the, to, to her and, and any player that suffers a serious injury or any injury. It's, it's the worst thing that can happen to a cricketer uh, or professional athlete in, in their career. Um, and Shaquana has, um, you know, had a, had a long period of, of extensive treatment um, that started, as you said, back in a camp that took place here in Antigua in, in 2017. And she even started that camp with an injury. She'd um, fractured her toe, so didn't take part in the first few weeks of that training camp here in Antigua and luckily she got back to full fitness towards the end of the camp and was able to rejoin the team in practice and in training and it was then as you said right at the end of that camp that she had a fall in the in the field and um, and injured her knee uh, and really uh, unfortunately since then uh, she's gone through a long period of of, of surgery and, and physiotherapy and rehab that as I said right at the start I'm very sympathetic to her case and, and the situation that she's found herself in. But I certainly um, am disappointed with some of the things that she said last night. I certainly would strongly refute many of the accusations she led at Cricket West Indies and also our other stakeholders because um, we've given her enormous support um, since that injury. Um, she was initially assessed by the medical team in Antigua. There was a day off the next day and then all the players were flying home so you know she had extensive swelling on her knee and it was agreed that she should uh, get treatment she should ice it and the, by the time she got back to Barbados hopefully the swelling would have reduced so that if she had an MRI scan we would get a much more accurate picture of her injury uh, to assess it and, and to agree the next level she was booked in to see our doctor in Barbados but for whatever reason she she chose to to see her own doctor uh, that doctor did provide um, and do an MRI scan and, and again, not um, unsurprisingly, chose a sort of a conservative route of treatment initially, which was to, um, to give it um, physiotherapy and rehab to brace the knee. Um, but probably after a few weeks, maybe a couple of months, it became apparent that that wasn't necessarily working as well as any of us would have expected. So it was agreed with her and our medical teams that she would go to Jamaica for surgery. Um, so she went for surgery uh, in the middle of 2017 in Jamaica uh, and then returned to Barbados for uh, physiotherapy and rehab. Um, again, it was then several months later that it was agreed with her own doctor that, and our medical people that she should have surgery and she requested to go to Canada for that surgery. We would normally try and treat all players here in the Caribbean um, if we can and um, but again she made that specific request so we agreed to that surgery in Canada um, and she went up there and she was actually accompanied by our sports science and medicine manager uh, to oversee the, the operation and her rehab. Um, the surgery by all accounts was, was successful. Uh, she requested whether she could stay in Canada for another two weeks to do her rehab there rather than in Barbados, and we agreed to that. Uh, she then went back to Barbados um, to do extensive physio. Um, she asked them to change the physio, and we, we agreed to change her physio. Um, and then she requested uh, towards the latter part of 2018 to go back to Canada to see the surgeon again. And our medical team were in discussions with the surgeon to see whether that was firstly required and secondly, when that could be uh, arranged and it was then that I received an email from Shaquana 
um, that actually said that she'd gone to Canada on her own and and, uh, and had surgery. Um, and could we pay for the bill? Um, she had prior to that engaged uh, legal represent representatives. So again, on legal advice, I wrote to her legal representatives and said, yeah, we absolutely would pay for her uh, medical expenses of that third surgery. Um, but to do so, we obviously needed copies of the invoices. We also wanted her permission to speak to the surgeon to find out what surgery took place and how successful it had been. Um, we didn't hear back from the lawyers and we chased them on a couple of occasions and by the early part of 2019 we were we were even considering whether she changed legal representatives so wrote and asked for confirmation that they were still in contact with Shaquana and that they were still representing her and in February 2019 we received communication that they were in contact with Shaquana they were still representing her um, and that was the last formal um, communication we had from Shaquana. Um, she's obviously chosen recently to, to go public. Um, she said last week, or sorry, yesterday, that uh, she hadn't heard from West Indies Players Association at yeah. all. Um, but I know for a fact that Wayne Lewis of Weaver spoke to her last week. Um, our president, Ricky Skerritt, found, was, a, was contacted by someone in Barbados who asked him to look into the matter in June of last year and and he contacted us and said what was happening and through the BCA we reached out to her um, and again she she refused our help and refused dialogue then so um, we remain completely committed to speak to her um, through your help um, it became apparent that she was going to be willing to talk to us yeah. so I, I, I sent her a message today um, she's replied back saying that she will meet with representation on a without prejudice basis next week and on Zoom. And, you know, I very much hope that we can, we can try and find a resolution to this, because as I said, you know, we, we offered to pay for that third surgery. We, I'm very sympathetic to her and any cricketer um, that gets injured. Um, you know, our new president and leadership have a cricket first philosophy. And, you know, that means that cricket, cricket and cricketers are our main focus. So we absolutely want to resolve this if we can, but, to, to hear her say that no one had spoken to her when we've we've taken all measures known to us through not just our own people but through Weeper and through the BCA to try and make contact with her, um, we have paid for all of her surgeries that we know about. We've paid for all of her physiotherapy. Uh, we've granted every request that she's made throughout this period. We've we've granted. Um, you know, we flew her back business class. We spent over fifty thousand US dollars to date on her treatment. Uh, we continued to pay her salary after sh her contract expired. Um, you know, by my mind, that's not an organisation that doesn't care. Um, and we continue to invest in players. You know, our players now, whether you're an international player, either men or women, or whether you're a franchise player, they all have private medical health care insurance. We have insurance policies for temporary and total permanent disablement. Uh, we've continued to invest in the best medical um, sort of services and care that we can provide our, our players. We've got a chief medical officer in Dr. Israel Dalit. We have a sports science and medicine manager in Dr. Ober Goulson. And we continue to make decisions and use our finite resources as best we can to support players because, yeah. you know, it's not just us who have players at the heart, as I said, through Cricket First, but, you know, the West Indies Players Association is, is part of their DNA to care and, and look after players. So, yeah, we do take her allegations and, and the fact that she's chosen to go public um, very seriously we're disappointed we think it damages our reputation and and we also feel that through everything that I've said you know I think we've we've done everything we can to give her the support that, that she needs and to try and get her back to full fitness because that's ultimately what her aim our aim has been throughout this whole period and you know we and we're about to embark on a, on a process to try and get all of our cricketers through coaching qualifications through the first aid courses through the, the the CRB checks that they need to do and through our new foundation courses and level one and they're available not just to current players but also to former players so you know we we take um you know we've got a personal development manager we have a huge personal development network throughout the Caribbean trying to help players to transist from their cricket careers into their next careers and and that's all available to Shaquana but you know, we need to engage with her either directly or through her legal representative representatives 
if we're going to try and move this thing forward and that's yeah. very much our intention i can assure you and everyone watching that we continue to do all that we can for all of our cricketers um, yeah. both when they're playing and when they have to go through the transition into their second career yeah johnny just on a point of of clarity here obviously a lot of what you you've said in the past uh, seven or eight minutes sounding completely different from what Shaquana Quinton reported in our interview with her yesterday. Now, I am I'm taking from what you've said and what she said that it was late 2018 that she had gone to Canada to do that third surgery, would it have been? Yeah, it was November 2018. Yeah. November 2018. And you were saying that up to that point and including that surgery, Cricket West Indies had taken care of all of her bills? Absolutely. Okay. And that was the bill that the, the total just over 50,000 US dollars. Yeah. And as I said, in addition to that, when her contract expired, she was on a retainer contract in 2017. When that expired um, in, in September of 2017, we continued to pay her yeah. um, up until, I think, um, April of, of 2018. Yes. I'm, I'm, I'm identifying something that you said just now, uh, Johnny, about her trip to Canada, which was done without the Cricket West Indies knowledge. How difficult was that for you from a process of interacting with her? Um, just listening to you suggest it, it comes across to us that, uh, first of all, CWI would have been surprised that she would have gone um, without their discussion or without contact with Cricket West Indies to go on for that third surgery. Yeah, look, it was... It was a real surprise to me when I got the email saying that, you know, she was not only in Canada, but she'd had the surgery. Obviously, from a medical point of view, that becomes enormously complicated because it means that we don't have access to speak to that surgeon or to get any details of that surgery whatsoever without her written permission. Um, and unfortunately, um, despite writing to, as I said, she'd instructed lawyers before then. So again, the legal advice once that legal process has started, was to write through her lawyers uh, and ask very, uh, very clearly for her permission to speak to that surgeon to understand not just what had taken place, what the assessment was, and, and again, what the rehab was. At that stage, we were expecting her to be back in contact with us, providing us with the invoices, providing us with um, permission to speak to the surgeon to, again, come back into our care in Barbados to do what we could to continue to pay for her physiotherapy and continue to try and get her back to full fitness. And, yeah. and that's, as I said, when communication um, became very challenging. Yeah. Can, can I just point out quickly, though, that from her standpoint, if I'm listening to her correctly, Johnny, um, it does sound to me as if she had been frustrated with the, the treatment and the surgeries and so on that came under the CWI umbrella. And she felt as if she had no choice in frustration now, but to seek some assistance for her career-threatening injury elsewhere. Because I said at the start, I'm, I'm sympathetic to any player that gets injured. It's a frustrating process to any player. Um, you know, I don't think fans really see that that's that side of things from a sports perspective. You know, but players that get injured and that you know not playing is is hugely frustrating. Going through rehab can be you know, very painful, very monotonous, uh, very difficult. And, and as I said, we're sympathetic to that, but it's really important from a medical care point of view. And we believe we've got the best medical practitioners in the region giving the best possible advice that the players work with us on that. Um, and when they leave the system, both from a legal point of view, a medical point of view, it becomes very, very difficult. Johnny, well, thank you so much for taking the time coming on our show and, of course, clearing the air. I know you are in contact with Shaquana now, so I hope that, you know, Cricket West Indies and, of course, the player can come to some sort of agreement. And, of course, cricket wins and good wins. Yeah, we certainly hope so. And that will be our attention um, in our discussions that we, again, we hope very much will we'll restart next week. All right. Well, take care and thank you. Thank you very much. Of course, that is the CEO of Cricket West Indies, Johnny Grave. We take a short break and come back.